So this is example two, potentially your page nine uh, of the further trig model units on the third lesson on the applications of the harmonics. Right, so what we got here, so part A. So I want you to do the translations, transformations from sine onto this. So I'm going to look at the harmonics form for this. So to find that, it's 2 squared. Oh, I like this one because it's got a change in the sign. So that's going to be 49 plus 4, root 53. To find alpha, uh, so 10 alpha. So it's always the second number divided by the first number. And if you remember when we did this last lesson, I said to you, ignore the sign, make that bit positive. So I'm ignoring the minus. The reason I'm ignoring the minus is because when I did compare it, if I do it properly and I use comparing coefficients, I was comparing it against the full compound angle formula, which was a sine alpha, or sine A, sine B, minus cos A, cos B. So the minus was the same. So when it comes to comparing, I'm ignoring that minus sign. But it's always the second number divided by the first number. And I wanted it in terms of sine, and sine was the first number that I had. So if I do the inverse tan of 7 over 2, just check the completed. Oh, no, this is cheeky, isn't it? It's switched from degrees to radians. So make sure you're in radians, and I'll give you a value. Remember, radians doesn't have to be pi's. It can just be a decimal. So that's 1.29. Rad. So my 2 sine x minus 7 cos x is actually the same as root 53 sine of uh, x. Now remember with sine, the, same, the sine is the same. So it's a minus there. So it's going to be a minus here. If it was cos, you switch it. So because it's sine, it's the same. So there's a lot to get your head around. You know, this is I'm not, you know, it's not easy. It's far from easy, this. It's not easy at all, this. It's just a practice thing, though. As with most things we must practice and practice and keep practicing and asking. Right, so what we've got here, so we want the transformations. So I've put it in harmonic form, but I've not actually answered the question. So we've got a uh, stretch. Scale factor root 53 in the y direction or parallel to the y axis, whichever way you want to say it. So that's one of them. And the next one is a translation. And remember, you change the, the sign on it. So 1.29 rad 0 there. There we go. Okay, so that's part A done. Right, let's have a look at part B now. There's some dodgy box in there. So state the maximum value. Okay, so remember for part B, the maximum value. So let me put down my root 53 sine of x minus 1.29. So remember what I said for maximum or minimum values. Box the, the sine of cos. And that bounces between plus or minus 1. So sine bounces between plus or minus 1. So its maximum value is when the box, so when sine of x minus 1.29 is equal to 1. So my maximum value is actually root 53, because it's root 53 times by 1. And that's one thing that lots of students really struggle with. So I found the maximum value I uh, see so at least positive, I told you first positive it finds, corresponding x value. So I want to solve it now, so it occurs when sine of x minus 1.29 is equal to 1. So x minus 1.29 is the inverse sine of 1. Now it was 1 at pi by 2 at 90 degrees, so x minus 1.29 is pi by 2. So if I add on 1.29, I get 2.86. Oops. And that corresponds to what's in the completed pack. 
<sighs> so that's part B done. Right, well, what is going on here then? Um, so for part C, we've got something a little bit more algebra heavy. So let's just kind of stop and compare 2 sin x minus 7 cos x to 2 sin 3t minus pi by 3 minus 7 cos 3t minus pi by 3. And if you look, and this happens quite a lot, they get you to work it out for something that looks okay, and then they switch the bit that's okay and make you think that it's a lot harder than it is. So what that means is, like moving on from there, that my root 53 sine of x minus 1.29, if I box the x, because the x has changed, hasn't it? So that's going to become, uh, it looks a little bit messy when I write it down. So instead of x, I'm writing 3t minus pi by 3, minus 1.29. So that is root 53 sine of 3t minus 2.34. Now that's not even the question. What I've done here so far is I've transformed this part of it. So it's a lot, there's a lot involved in this. It's a real head mess. So I've transformed this part of it. That's what I've just done, which means that I've ignored this three here. What can, I mean, I've got to use that three. So what I really need to do then, so I've done a bit of faffing around We'll put it down, oh no, let me try and find a bit more space. They're quite big, these questions with not a lot of room for writing. So this is part C continued. So it's root 53 sine of 3t minus 2.34 is equal to 3. So I'm going to solve this. 3t minus 2.34 is equal to 3 over root 53. So I could graph sine of 3x minus 2.34 and 3 over root 53 on my calculator in radians and just read the values out. That's what I can do. And that's what I am going to do to make it easier. I'm just going to pause while I put the calculator on and I'll put the, um, equation, put the equation in. Hang on. Right, sorry about that. So I've graphed here, look, see? So I'm graphing sine of 3x minus 2.34, the bit on the left, and 3 over root 53, the bit on the right. I am, um, it's not going to work, is it? I'm in radians, and I've set my axes from 0 to pi, and I'm going to pick up my values of, I'm just going to run out, this is, hang on, let me pause. 